individual programs in the library. It's been a benefit to uh, to staff. It's been a benefit to patrons and the programs that it supports. So I think it's a you know it, it's really been a very valuable resource. So. Um we discussed at the finance committee meeting that we would do it. Here's a draft. It, well, I think I think I signed it. Don't we? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can mail um, any suggestions to me as well. I'm the ghost writer. <laughs> Betty's <laughs> on I'll editorial help. Okay. Um, but I also want to show it to Anthony before right. it goes out because sure. it's got his name on it. So I want to make sure he. he and this okay. goes out definitely at the end of November. No, no. Sooner. No, no. It says December, December 1st. It goes out December. Oh, that's, it does say December 1st. Okay. <laughs> oh, so we will have plenty here. of time yeah. to yeah. have him look at, look at it. Okay. So, yes, please, if you have any, um, oh, you <laughs> you do. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness, she has a lot. <laughs> okay, All thank right. you. Uh, per capita grant. Um, these... <laughs> Capital grant is funds we get from the state of Illinois, and we they always have a task for us to do. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, I hope everybody sat here and read this. <laughs> um, it actually um, brings to mind that I think one of the goals that we probably should do in the winter um, after Anthony arrives is to look at our trustee handbook and bring it up to date. We have a new strategic plan. We've got a lot of things that are new and um, so that's, so this is a good start on us thinking about what are the responsibilities and duties of trustees. So, uh, more to come on that. I hope you read it all. Um, it's actually really interesting. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, this one was. Yeah. Some, uh, uh, some of them aren't quite as interesting. Um, director's report. Okay. Gail. Hey. Well, I mean, I well, actually, does anyone have any questions on intellectual freedom, uh, the chapters of the trustees? What's the source and what year? Trustees, facts, and files. It doesn't say it. Did. No, it didn't say. I was curious. Mm -hmm. It's chapter six of a book. So, but, but I, it's been. It's on. I think it's on the Secretary of State's website. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing it. Yeah. Is this out of the ALA trust, or rather the um, uh, ILA trustees manual? No, that's that's out of the trustees facts manual. Yeah, it says okay. Trustees Facts File, third right, edition. Yeah. Those, okay. Those are chapters. Who put it up? You know, put that up. Oh, it the last um, page, I thought. I think it's the ALA, I'm not sure. You can find out. Well, right. in any event, but that's I what think we're required to do. It doesn't make any difference. The duties and responsibilities of trustees, yeah. we need to update our own personal bylaws and you know, what it is that we're supposed to be doing and so on and so forth. So this is a good kickoff, shall we say, for that process, which will probably take place in January, February yeah, time Per frame. capita grants generally run between twenty two and $25,000 a year. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I, we need to update our trustee handbook anyway, mm -hmm. so... And just yeah, and the, IP, the IPLAR is what gets <laughs> us... The IPLAR is what gets us the grant, right? Submitting the IPLAR and then fulfilling the these reports. The annual report gets us the grant, but the annual report says we've done these things. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. And I have every confidence that you all read it. <laughs> yes, it was, it was very good. It actually was sort of interesting. Um, director's report. Okay. So we're going to have story time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so my first um, item is 
that the youth department has added some Vox books to their collection. And what it is is um, included in, there's a little, I'll, I'll start it so I can pass it along so you can hear it going. I do this but all the time. But you can yeah. put in um, headphones or you can just listen and it has, it's like everything new is old. It's just like those old audio cassettes that we, you know, and it tells you when to turn the page. It's not very loud. So you're supposed to have headphones You either can have headphones, or let's see if I can, that's probably as loud as I can make it. The idea is it's supposed to be independently, the child can read, oh, there you go, can read the book, can um, read the words, turn the page, and um, they're very popular. We're not the first library to have the collection, but um, it's just going to be going out probably tomorrow. And it's called Box, Box, like V-O-X? V-O-X, yeah. right. Uh -huh. nice. So the uh, November Off the Shelf, I said that, is going to go off, go out um, to residents around October 25th. So it's at the printers right now. I think what I was thinking about the letter is that it has to, it's mailed out on the first, but it has to be done before because we have to send it to the printer. So that was why I, I was like, well, why are we hurrying through it? But it's because we have to print it. So that's why I wrote it for Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, we're, Something else that the community services department is working on is creating a community <laughs> calendar so that we will be aware of what local events are <laughs> happening in the village. Oh, <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all have this memorized by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come back to where the page the sound is. Yeah, I, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it by heart. I do. <laughs> we all know that one by yeah. heart. Um, and we're also trying to make sure that the programs that we plan on a particular day aren't competing with something big like the Oscar or whatever. Right. So it's something that we've been thinking about doing for a while and um, oh thank you for passing it along. And so that's something that they're going to um, <laughs> So will it be an internal document? How will that yeah, yeah. you just No, it? just internally. Okay. So that we're aware. In fact there's a the Linden Fall Fest, is that what it's called? That's this Saturday. That's this Saturday. We're trying to get it together to have a table there. All right. Because we're trying to make sure that the library has a presence in as many um, village events that we possibly can. Will we'll friends center. also be there? Because they generally show up everywhere. I honestly don't know. I'm trying to get the book back there, but I don't think I can write it. So it, I mean, and that's, I know. It's kind of far. Oh, is it? I just well, it's the, the fourth you know, and Linden. Fourth oh, yeah, 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 that's no problem. That's, it, that's that. easy. That's oh, easy. Okay. But I just, I just, I've got a commitment. I try to get it. So, yeah. okay. Okay. Well, fourth and Linden. So, yeah. Fourth and it's the Linden Fall oh, Fest. Oh, oh, I've never heard of it. I haven't heard of it in 25 years. Between 12 and 4. And the children. Part is 12 to 2, and yeah. then the adult yeah. part. <laughs> and even if we have, you know, a table with giveaways, we just want to, like, here we are, well met mm -hmm. library. Um, okay, for those of you who have sore arms in the room, um, I actually did not have a flu shot today, oh. but Mike Boone, our HR person, um, coordinated a flu shot clinic, and I don't know how many numbers there were, but it seemed like there were a lot of people who did get their flu shot. So I think it was a really good service. Let me just shut this off because we don't <laughs> want to turn it on. Okay. Um, glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> it, um, the full time uh, the full time staff gets it's part of your insurance you get right. a free flu shot, right. but this was also free for the part timers as well. Oh, it was. It was. And we had um, flu shots for younger people and the Older people How old flu, are you? Yes. <laughs> flu shot, you know the the, the high dose, high one. dose right? <laughs> right. So we had some, uh, we had both of those. And also, if you couldn't make it to the clinic today, full timers, of course, can go. But also, the part timers can go to the the Walgreens and um, Green Bay Road, the 811 Green Bay Road, and get their flu shot. So we had two staff members go to ILA conference in Peoria. Mm -hmm. And both said that it was a fantastic experience. They were very excited and enthused by um, the conference. And so I think they will be sharing some of the things that they brought back with us. So that's always good. We have a new monitor, a substitute monitor. He has no hours. But what we found is we had one monitor who was out for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was a hardship to have the on-staff monitor sub. So we have now um, someone who is just going to be no regular hours, just subbing as needed. Oh, nice. Um, 
we uh, the application for Karen Joshi's position has received a number of applications. In fact, today Betty and I and Karen and Mike met and looked mm -hmm. over the applications. How many? There were 10 applications that met the minimum requirement, which was an MLS. Mm -hmm. okay. There were a number of others that did not have the MLS, but we d felt that we needed to um, mm -hmm. have that as a requirement. How many internal candidates? We do not have any internal candidates. Um, and so there is going to be a committee that's formed mm -hmm. right now. It is going to be me. We know for sure that it's Krista Hutley from the Adult Services Department. Mm -hmm. The Youth Services representative has not been appointed yet. And um, Mike will be, um, he will coordinate everything, but we will go through and, and do the interviewing process. And we really want Anthony to have a chance yeah. to mm -hmm. meet the final mm -hmm. candidates mm -hmm. before a decision mm -hmm. is made. Um, so we're going to be partying. We're going to have <laughs> parties for welcoming Anthony and parties saying goodbye to Karen. And um, so the community parties will all be, both will be um, advertised enough, mm -hmm. or, no, or the public will be notified and off the shelf. When is uh, Karen's last day? Has that been set? She thinks it will be the 30th of November. Okay. So. So in terms of programming, the Death Cafe that I talked about mm -hmm. had um, actually a lot of people, 30 people, yeah. and people wanted to have another one. So mm -hmm. it's scheduled for February in 2019. Mm -hmm. Betty mentioned that we're having the author of Call Me American come this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think it, I, I've he heard um, he's, I've heard him speak, not in person, but I've heard him speak, and I think he's, he will be a very good speaker. Mm -hmm. And you very don't interesting. have to read the book to, no, you, to get a lot out of right. hearing him talk, right. so mm -hmm. it would be good if we could get a lot of people. Right. So we, I, we were, I had neglected to put in the adults department summer reading statistics, so now there we have it. And actually, the, the statistic that I think is the best is that it was a 50% increase over 2017. So it, there's adults in the community that really want to participate, and it just keeps on growing. So um, kudos to the Adult Services Department who plans this. And there's also a teen reading logs as well, which um, one less than 2017, but still, that's still a lot. I, I think that's pretty good to encourage the teens the busy teens to, to be reading. Mm -hmm. We talked about, last time we talked about books with the buzz, that bibliography, and now it's posted on our website. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So yeah. that is really good. And stop by the Youth Services Department because there'll be spooky decorations and spooky <laughs> story times. <laughs> we also have a new um, online resource. It's called Creative Bug. And it's made by, or it's oh, that's, developed that's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. by the company Joanne. I don't think they're called Joanne Fabrics anymore, but I know them as Joanne mm -hmm. Fabrics. So it's, and um, there's some really interesting, wonderful things. And it's available remotely as well as inside the mm -hmm. library. The next piece, if you excuse me, I need a drink of water. Mm -hmm. I was working on some um, statistics comparing the IPLAR from the last IPLA report from the previous IPLA report. And I just thought it was interesting that our library is reflecting trends that are in the country, which is that our physical circulation of items has, has gone down, not significantly, but it has gone down. Mm -hmm. But our usage of downloading and streaming materials has just risen above where we were just even a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, the questions that people are asking us, though, here in the library has gone up. And so people are really using us as a resource for mm -hmm. help. The internet sessions, um, the usage of the public internet computers, that's pretty much stayed the same. Mm -hmm. But you can see how our wireless sessions have just really increased mm -hmm. um, in the last fiscal year. So people also realize, especially now that we switched to our Comcast Fiber line, it's much more reliable. Mm -hmm. And we have also have more hotspots. I think that people are coming again and again using our wireless because it um, mm -hmm. it's a good, reliable system. Mm -hmm. So 
So on the next page is our, our CERC activity. And um, I looked at the, the number of items and I said, wow, and then I realized, because from last, last month it went up 168,000. But I think what that's reflecting is more and more of our um, downloadable and streaming resources are now being integrated into the catalog and that when it's integrated into our catalog and we have an item, it's considered part of our collection. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but those, the number of ebooks, last time it was 82,935, I mean last time meaning last month, mm -hmm. and now it's 199,929. Wow. So, that's the, I mean, one of the reasons why that number jumped so significantly. And then um, just in terms of, I was looking at the, pretty much things have kind of remained the same. I know I keep on broken record about Canopy, but I think that I'm not the only one who, because in just a short amount of time, I mean, from one year to the next, the number of people utilizing it has almost doubled. So mm -hmm. that's good. We're trying to get the word out. There was a Frankenstein program, and we, mm -hmm. um, the individual who gave it did not want to be introduced, but we had canopy flyers out on the table, and a lot of them were picked up. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to take away from, yeah. he just wanted to start his program and go, but we, d we are going to try and do as much promotion of the databases as we can.